Hi, welcome to another communication course. In this video, we will discuss the concept of amplitude modulation. What is modulation? What is the necessity of modulation? Take an example. A person is speaking something. What is the frequency range of this particular signal? It can be anywhere between 300 Hz to 3.5 kHz. Just take one particular case. Say, uh, this particular signal has a frequency of 3 kHz. So, what is the wavelength associated with this particular signal? So, we have this particular relation C is equal to F into lambda. So, the frequency and wavelength are associated by the equation light velocity C is equal to frequency into wavelength. So, from this equation, lambda is equal to c by f so the light velocity is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second by the frequency is 3 kilohertz so 3 into 10 to the power of 3 so this is 10 to the power of 5 the units are meters so to transmit this 3 kilohertz signal or to receive this 3 kilohertz signal efficiently the Minimum antenna height should be approximately lambda by 10. So that means to transmit and receive this 3 kilohertz signal, the minimum antenna height required is the lambda that we got is 10 power 5 by 10. So 10 power 4 meters. So in other words, it is 10 kilometers. So having an antenna with a height of 10 km is practically impossible. But I am interested in transmitting this voice message. Okay, the person is speaking something. I am interested in transmitting and receiving this particular signal. So what should I do? So what I do is I call this as a message. Whatever the person is speaking, I call this as message. Okay. So, I shift this message from 3 kilohertz to 3 megahertz. Okay. So, this message which is at 3 kilohertz. Now I am shifting this to 3 megahertz. Okay, say assume. Then I transmit. Okay, so when I shift this message to 3 megahertz, what is the new wavelength associated with the signal? So, it is lambda nu is equal to C by the new frequency, which is 3 megahertz. So, it is 10 power 2. So, now the antenna height required is lambda by 10. So, it is approximately 10 meters. In the previous case, the antenna height required is 10 power 4. Now the antenna height required is 10 meters. Okay. At least having an antenna of 10 meter height is practically possible. Right. So now using 10 meter height antenna, I transmit this 3 megahertz signal. Now at the receiver side, I use this 10 meter antenna. I receive the signal and I down convert this 3 megahertz signal to 3 kilohertz signal. Why I have to down convert this again? Because I can't hear this 3 megahertz signal. Right? So here this process, what is the process? What exactly here I am doing? Just I am doing frequency translation or frequency shifting okay 
so if you remember in fourier transforms class we have studied this frequency shifting property the other name given to this property is modulation property okay so in frequency domain simply we can understand modulation as frequency shifting okay frequency shifting so the first advantage of this modulation concept is getting lower antenna heights or practically implementable antenna heights okay this is first advantage next second advantage see there are three persons okay so three persons are speaking simultaneously three persons are speaking simultaneously okay so what is the frequency range so all these three persons message falls between 300 to 3.5 kilohertz right so if i transmit these message signals directly they overlap each other okay for example a crowd is there if all the persons in the crowd speak simultaneously we can't understand anything correct the same way here when we transmit the original signals as it is then they overlap right so that's why what i do is so i call this as say message one second person's information as message two third person's information as message three so first message i modulate to frequency f1 second message i modulate to frequency f2 third message i modulate to frequency f3 now i transmit there is a huge gap between f1 f2 f3 okay so now they don't overlap so i can transmit multiple signals simultaneously okay so i am multiplexing the signals so this is the other advantage of this modulation okay so now there are many advantages are there so in subsequent sessions we will discuss the more advantages of modulation techniques right now how many types of modulation techniques are there so we broadly classify them as say analog modulation techniques and digital modulation techniques in analog modulation techniques again we have amplitude modulation and we have angle modulation okay in amplitude modulation we have conventional am dsb sc ssb and bsb in angle modulation we have frequency modulation and phase modulation in digital modulation schemes we have baseband modulation techniques and band pass modulation techniques in baseband we have pcm dpcm and delta modulation in band pass we have bpsk binary frequency shift key and binary amplitude shift key and finally we have mra modulation techniques okay so these are different types of modulation techniques okay so we have some more modulation techniques first we will try to cover these all modulation techniques then we will go for 
other modulation technique like GMSK, right? And spread spectrum modulation technique and spatial modulation technique, which is being currently used in 5G technologies, not 4G, 5G, fifth generation, right? So these concepts, uh, say spread spectrum modulation, spatial modulation. So these concepts are useful even in in your interviews also, right? So we will cover all these modulation techniques, right? So we have many modulation schemes. What are the performance metrics for these modulation schemes? So whenever we study one modulation scheme, okay, so how to judge or how to compare different modulation schemes? What are the performance metrics of modulation schemes? Okay. So generally in every modulation scheme, what we will try to study is what is the bandwidth occupied by the modulated signal and what is the power taken and noise performance and finally the complexity of the transmitter and receiver okay so to be more specific the complexity of the generation of modulated signal and the complexity of demodulation detection of modulated signal okay so we will try to cover these four in every modulation scheme so now we start our discussion with amplitude modulation okay so in every modulation scheme we have two signals first one is carrier signal second one is message signal okay so what is message signal? i am speaking something that is a message i am listening to a song that is a message i am watching a video video is a message with message can be anything right so the message can be audio say voice video or data anything right so what is the frequency range of audio 20 h to 20 kilohertz What is the frequency range of voice? 300 H to approximately 3 kilohertz or 3.5 kilohertz. Video up to 4.5 megahertz. Okay. Data it's times hundreds of megahertz. It depends on the pulse width. Right. So data occupies high bandwidth. So this is message. Now this message I wanted to transmit. So to transmit this message, I need a postman. That postman we are calling as carrier. Okay. So this carrier, first I take a sinusoidal signal as carrier. So A cos 2 pi Ft plus 5. This is a carrier signal. Okay. So just I add the suffixes subscript C C A C A C is amplitude of carrier. F C frequency of carrier. Phi C phase of carrier. Okay. Now, so 
this carrier I am writing again here C of T is equal to AC cos 2 pi FCT plus 5. Okay. So here this is amplitude, this is frequency, this is phase. So as I said, carrier is nothing but it's like a postman. Okay. Say this particular postman has got three pockets. The names of these pockets are amplitude pocket, frequency pocket, phase pocket. Okay. So this postman has to carry our message. In which pocket he is keeping our message? Okay. Message call my message as M of T. Okay. So if he is keeping my message in amplitude pocket, I call this as amplitude modulation. If he is keeping my message in frequency pocket, I call it as frequency modulation. If he is keeping my message in phase pocket, I call it as phase modulation. Okay, just I am explaining just for uh, your simple understanding. Okay, I will give you the exact definition in subsequent slides. Okay, so that means here if your amplitude varies with respect to your message signal then I call it as amplitude modulation. If your frequency varies linearly with your message signal varies linearly with your message signal then I call it as frequency modulation. If your carrier phase varies linearly with message signal then we call it as phase modulation. Okay, so now I can define amplitude modulation as the amplitude of carrier varies in accordance with the message signal. Okay, this is how I can define amplitude modulation. Right now, from this definition, so that means this amplitude should be proportional to my message signal. Now from this definition, we will try to write the amplitude modulated wave equation. Right? So before writing, just assume a signal is there, C of t, say 2 cos uh, 2 pi fct. Okay? Just if I draw this waveform, Okay, so cos signal, right? Okay, it is like this. So this is 2, this is minus 2, okay, and the frequency is Fc. Now, what I do is I have a signal, say y of t, which is uh, say 3 times c of t. So, how do you plot y of t? So, I plot y of t something like so it is 3 times c of t so it is 3 times 2 cos 2 pi fc so it is like this same frequency sir so it is 6 minus 6 right now i have a signal z of t which is m of t into c of t where m of t is my message signal say which uh, look like I am plotting my message signal something like this uh, <coughs> like this 
this is my message here. okay so this is my message signal and this is my carrier signal cft is this my carrier signal okay so this is my carrier signal so now can we plot z of t yeah so it is simply multiplication so it is something like this i am interested only in shape of the signal okay what is this exact amplitude it is simple you can multiply this 2 with say m of t is having amplitude some a then it becomes 2a okay so like this right so now we are familiar with multiplying two signals right now i take a signal which is uh, something like this this is my message signal now okay now again i am having a carrier signal like this okay now i am interested in multiplying these two signals m of t into c of t okay so what i am doing just z of t is equal to m of t into c of t so that is m of t into c of t i have taken in the previous example as some 2 cos 2 pi f c t so what is the amplitude of this particular cos signal 2 m of t this is my amplitude this amplitude is proportional to message signal so by the definition i call this as amplitude modulated signal right so how my amplitude modulated signal will look like so it will look like something uh, like this so these two are same except the amplitude here this particular top portion if i connect all these top points this shape is same as the message signal okay so the amplitude of the carrier is varying with respect to message signal correct so this is my carrier original carrier okay so this amplitude is constant here which is 2 because i have taken cft as 2 cos 2 pi ct okay so this carrier amplitude i am varying with respect to message signal okay see here this amplitude is varying if i connect all the top points then the shape is exactly similar to my message signal okay so now i can call this as am signal correct but for example now consider a case where uh, this is my message signal if this is my message signal then by the same definition z of t equal to m of t into c of t so i draw carrier for your reference again so this is my carrier signal so this is m of t and this is c of t if i draw m of t into c of t okay so so this is my modulated signal if i plot or connect all the top dots then i get a signal which is like this okay now the envelope or the amplitude of the carrier is not exactly same as my message okay so for this purpose what i do is i slightly modify this particular equation as 
So instead of writing Z of t, write S of t is equal to. So one plus some constant k a into m of t. This as my amplitude k c. Right. So two cos two pi f c t is my carrier. Now in the previous case. In this position, I have written only m of t. Now, I am adding one plus some constant k a into m of t. So, why I am doing this? Here, k a is a constant which I use to make sure that always the resultant signal this. Modulated signal is above zero. That means I take the same example here. So this is my message signal, and this is my carrier signal. This is my carrier signal. Now the modulated signal shape. Is like this. So if I connect all the amplitude top points, envelope points, then the shape here is exactly same as my message signal. Okay. So I adjust k a such that this envelope falls above x axis, above zero axis. Okay, so this is my conventional AM equation. This is my conventional AM equation. Whatever the equation Z of t equal to M of t into C of t, this is also a type of AM. Okay, this we call as DSB essay that we will discuss in next videos. But now, for timing, what I am interested in is this equation. So, if I generalize this equation, so it is one plus k a into m of t into my carrier signal a c cos two pi f c t. Okay, this is the standard equation of conventional A. If I rewrite this particular equation, it is a c cos two pi f c t plus k a into m of t into a c cos two pi f c t. Okay, so carrier signal plus message signal into carrier signal. Okay, so this is the time domain equation of am signal okay so in the next video we will draw the spectrum of am signal and we will calculate the bandwidth occupied by am signal and the power taken by am signal thank you